Hello, welcome to the tutorial video for Fox Thermal Instruments Online Product Configurator. My name is Greg Smith. I am the Sales Support Manager here at Fox, and I'm going to guide you through how to use the configurator on our website. This is the home page. We can scroll down to find the configurator here, uh, but you can also find it under Products and Configure a Meter. You may have found this video from the tutorial link here on the configurator page. There are three sections to the configurator page. The first, allows you to enter in a previously made application ID number to load that app ID for editing or to create a PDF. The second section features a link to this tutorial video as well as a link to our Help Me Choose app. The third section is the configurator itself where you can choose between our various models and configure a meter. We'll get into that soon, but for now let's look at the Help Me Choose app. The Help Me Choose app asks some simple questions about your application to point you in the direction of the correct meter for it. How you answer the questions will weed out certain models that are not suitable for your application. When you've reached a finishing point, the Help Me Choose app will recommend a model or models to you. You can always click back to change your answers. In some cases, after you answer the questions, multiple different models will be recommended to you. If that is the case, you can choose between any of those presented. The meters listed on the left have fewer features than the meters listed towards the right. If you have any questions about how to choose from multiple different meters that are offered to you, you can visit our product comparison page or call Fox. Once you determine the type of meter you would like to configure, you can click on it and it will take you back to the primary configurator page with that model selected. We'll look at the other models in a minute, but for now let's configure a model FT1 insertion. All of the fields shown on the configurator are required to submit your application. As you fill out these fields, the model code at the top will change. If you're unsure about how to fill out a particular field, try clicking on the question mark icon next to that field. These help icons will explain what the configurator needs from you. So let's run through a simple configuration for air. Choose air as the gas. We'll leave the units of measurement in inches. The other option is millimeters. The fitting height is the height of the coupling on the outside of your pipe. Let's click the help icon to see what that looks like. Next is the pipe diameter. This is the pipe ID, not the general pipe size. If you know the schedule of your pipe, the help icon will give a table that shows a variety of pipe sizes and schedules with pipe IDs listed as well. For this configuration, let's assume a three inch schedule 40 pipe with an inside diameter of 3.068 inches. We'll enter that into the pipe ID field. Based on the fitting height and the pipe ID, a probe length will be recommended. You should generally choose the shortest probe length available. Next, we'll enter in our maximum flow rate. Note that there are limits to this value. If my flow rate is too low, I'll receive an error message. If my flow rate is too high, I'll receive a different error message. The configurator is checking to make sure that my application is within spec of the meter. Once we enter a flow rate value that is within spec, the error message will go away and will be given a velocity calculation for that flow rate in that pipe size. The velocities are listed in standard feet per minute and normal meters per minute. Next is the maximum pressure. There are limits here as well. Let's assume a max pressure of 100 psi. We also need to provide the maximum temperature of the application. This is the temperature of the gas in the pipe, not the ambient temperature. Based on the gas we chose earlier, a standard temperature and pressure will be recommended. For air, that STP is 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 14.696 PSI. The other standard options available are 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 14.73 PSI for natural gas applications, and 0 degrees Celsius with 700 millimeters mercury. You can also enter in custom STP values. Keep in mind that these are only reference temperatures and pressures. They do not directly correlate to any of the process conditions in your application. We'll leave this at 70F. After the process data, we need to configure the hardware of the meter. The first step is choosing what the 4 to 20 milliamp output will be configured for, flow or temperature. The default setting is flow, and the default values are from zero to your application's maximum flow rate. If we switch to temperature, the default setting will be from zero to the maximum temperature of the application. We'll leave this as flow. Next, you'll choose between whether or not you want a display and configuration panel with your meter. The FT1 can be configured as a blind unit 
that can only be communicated with through the outputs and through a USB port with FT1 View software. With that in mind, Fox always recommends the display and configuration panel. Next, you'll choose your second output from the meter. The standard output is your 4 to 20 from above, plus a pulse or frequency output. The other options are RS-485 outputs for BACnet or Modbus. If we choose Modbus or BACnet, that's all we need to do for this step. If we choose the pulse output, you can configure the units per pulse or pulses per unit settings on the meter. These values default for your application's maximum flow rate at 100 Hz. Finally, you can submit a project name to keep track of what this application is for. Now that the configurator has been completely filled out, this model code is applicable to your application. But to create an application ID number, you need to click the OK button at the bottom of the screen. This pop-up will prompt you to choose between any options you may need with your meter. When you've chosen the necessary options, click the Save button. You'll see a new pop-up stating that your application ID has been created. You'll need to make sure that pop-ups are enabled by your browser before you click Continue. After you click Continue, you'll be taken to a new window, or tab, with a PDF of your application, including the model code and your application ID number, or app ID. From here, you can go back to the website, or you can click the green button to submit your application to Fox for a quote. Because this is a PDF document, you can also save or print through your browser. But let's go back to the configurator and look at some of the other models. Like the FT1 insertion, we also offer an insertion model, FT2A and FT3. Using the configurator for these models is very similar. Let's look at an FT3 insertion. Still need to choose a gas, units of measurement, fitting height, shape of your pipe, round or rectangular, the inside pipe diameter, this time we'll use 4.026 inches for a 4 inch schedule 40 pipe, probe length, and we'll choose a larger probe length just for fun, the maximum flow rate, max pressure, max temp, STP values, and then we get to the new stuff for the FT3. The FT3 comes standard with two 4 to 20 milliamp outputs. This is the same for the FT2A. The first 4 to 20 is for flow, and the second is for temperature. With the FT3, you can also choose between having a display or not. On the FT2A, the display is standard for all units. Here we'll include it once again. The FT3 and FT2A also offer multiple sensor material options. Stainless steel versus Hastelloy. We'll stick with stainless. And while the FT1 can only be powered by 24 volts DC, the FT2A and the FT3 also have an AC power option and options for a remote display. Let's go with a local display and AC power. With a local display on an FT2A or an FT3, you must choose how your display is going to be oriented around the pipe. To see the available options, click the help icon. You'll see this pop up with a link to the FT3 insertion display codes. We'll take a quick look here. You'll see the flow meter oriented around the pipe in many different ways, depending upon the direction of the pipe, horizontal or vertical, and the direction of flow. But let's go back to the configurator. We'll stick with the D1 orientation code for horizontal pipe with flow from left to right. Next, we get to choose between optional communication outputs. The first option is a blank board. If you have a remote display in your application, you must choose between one of the other three options. The standard terminal block for the remote sensor, a Modbus output, which includes the terminal block for remote sensor, or a hard output which includes the terminal block for remote sensor. Let's choose Modbus this time. Again, you can enter a project name. We'll skip that this time. And finally, you have the option of a non-resettable totalizer. If you click yes, that means that the totalizer on your meter will not be able to be reset. This is only required in certain regions around the United States. So for the most part, you'll want to click no. As with the FT1, when you're finished, click OK, and you can create a PDF and submit it for a quote. We'll skip that this time around because I want to talk about our inline models. Let's look at a model FT2A inline. Fox inline meters are only available in certain pipe sizes. The meter is built and calibrated with the spool piece section that we call a flow body. The flow body can either be configured with threaded connections on each end, as shown here with the FT2A inline, or flange connections, as shown here with the FT3 inline. Let's go through a quick configuration. This time we'll choose natural gas. 
We'll leave the units of measurement in inches, and then we'll choose between our process connections on the flow body. In addition to flange versus NPT, you can also choose between stainless steel and carbon steel for most pipe sizes. Let's go with stainless NPT. The flow body size is next. You'll note that the smallest pipe sizes are only available for inline meters. Quarter inch, half inch, three quarter, one inch, and one and a quarter. Let's do a one inch application. We'll change our flow rate to SCFH, standard cubic feet per hour, and enter in a maximum flow rate of 1500. Once again, we'll enter our max pressure and max temp. You'll note here that the STP was defaulted to the 60 degrees Fahrenheit option. This is standard in the US for natural gas. We'll leave the four to 20 settings alone. We'll leave the stainless steel probe as it is. We'll go with a remote display this time, 24 volts powered. And then we can take a look at the different communication options on the FT2A. You can choose a blank board, Modbus, BACnet, DeviceNet, Profibus, or Ethernet Modbus TCP. Let's go with BACnet. Again, you have the option of a project name and a non-resettable totalizer. Let's go look at the model code at the top before we submit. Note that if we change something, the model code will change. Let's submit this application. Note that the options are different for different models. If you have any questions about the options offered, please feel free to contact Fox. But let's keep going. We'll click Continue to create the new window. And now let's go through the process of submitting one of these for a quote. We'll click the green button. You'll be taken to the Fox Contact Us page where you can enter your information. Before you submit, you'll have to answer a simple math problem and agree to our terms. Then click Submit. Your inquiry will be sent to the Fox Sales Department for a quote. Let's take one more look at the configurator. Let's review this first section of the configurator that we talked about near the beginning of the video. You can use this section to look up app IDs you've already created. Let's look at one we made previously, number 760. You can click the blue button to create a PDF of that app ID. As you can see, this is our inline FC2A with a one and a quarter inch flow body or you can click the green button to load that app ID into the configurator. Let's scroll down and take a look. Now if we change anything, let's say we go back to a local display and resubmit, we'll be given a new app ID number for this new configuration. Here we have number 761. And that does it for this tutorial of the Fox Online Product Configurator. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the Fox Sales Department by phone or email. Thanks for watching and have a great day.